Welcome back to the channel. In this episode, we're going to be having a look at what's involved in stripping down, overhauling and refurbishing the ribcase gearbox fitted to an MG Midget. So here's the ribcase gearbox we're going to be having a look at. This one was purchased off a popular auction website. It's a bit of an unknown. It does select all of the gears. The previous owner uh, assured me that it was working when it came off and trying all the gears they do work properly as they should do uh, something i've noticed is a, a little bit of play here in the uh the the shaft the main shaft coming into the towards the engine here which means that this bearing behind here is gone and also that's going to put a lot of wear around this seal area here so as part of the refurbishment and learning how to do this uh, what I'm going to do is take it apart, we'll replace the bearings, replace the lay shaft, all of the gaskets and seals, do a front end and nose uh, oil seal conversion, replace the rear oil seal here and then put it all back together again uh, ready for fitting to the car. So the reason for putting this video together is I've never taken apart a gearbox before, I've only got a basic garage and basic tools uh, but doing some research I believe that's possible to refurbish this gearbox uh, and get it to a state where it's uh, running as it should do so I can fit it to my MG Midget. And hopefully as I share my successes and my woes with you taking apart and refurbishing this gearbox I'll give you the confidence so that you can have a go and refurbish your gearbox as well. First job then is to get the side inspection cover off and also the end cover off. Covers removed then, I've got two plungers in here that I just need to be careful of. Other than that, we can move on to the next stage. I'm gonna take these two ball detents out here. And then after that, we can start to remove the selectors and the selector rods here by pushing those out through the, uh, through the front here. So we're gonna have a go at that next. Right, so we've removed these plunger detents. We've gone through the drain hole and we've removed the bolts for the, for the selectors. Next thing to do is get these rods out. To do that, I've got to remove the housing, the remote control housing and the rear case. So that's these bolts across the top and here. So I'm gonna put it up on its end and we'll get that off. Uh, only thing I'm conscious of at the moment is I've still got the, the detents in these holes. So I'm going to be really careful that these don't fall out while I'm doing it and conscious at some point these have got to be recovered. So once the housing and the remote are removed, this is what you'll see. You've got your three selectors here. So these are going to be the next things to come out. Uh, there was a shim on top of this bearing here. So that's been retained. Uh, so I can measure that and make sure that that's correct when it goes back in. And then you've got this main shaft here, uh, which I guess will be coming out with all the gear mechanisms on. So next thing to do is turn this back over then and we'll be getting these selector rods out. Uh, 
So a little tip at this stage, as I've just had a bit of a game, getting the plungers out of here and here. Uh, what I did is I used the, one of the, the pins and bolted a lot of board magnets to it. And that allowed me to put it down the hole that attached to the end of the plunger that you can see here and allowed me just to pull the plunger out of the hole really easily. That worked really well. And while I was doing it, I noticed there's actually two balls in there as well. And I wasn't expecting two, but down here, there are two interconnecting holes that go across and there are two balls that sit in there as well. So you've really got to make sure as you pull those apart that you don't lose those balls. So considering I've never done this before, I'm actually really pleased with the way it's going. It's not as difficult so far as I thought. Next then, we're going to remove the reverse shaft that's here by undoing this screw and then removing that. We're going to remove the lay shaft from here. That's going to go back in afterwards so I can measure the end float on that. And then we're going to have a go at getting this uh, in output shaft out from here by tapping that off. So let's crack on with that. So that output shaft uh, pulled out a lot easier than, than I was expecting. A couple of taps around the case uh, and it fall out. I've just noticed there's a little plunger in there as well. So I've got to be really careful not to lose that. Um, got my shaft over here. We'll, we'll be inspecting all the parts afterwards. Uh, next thing I've got to do then is to get out the input shaft here. And once that's out, I'll be able to get the, the lay gear out over here so to get the input shaft out i'm going to turn the case over uh, and just use a rubber mallet take the circlip off the end and then knock the input shaft through so next up measuring the end float in the the main lay shaft here and this is a 0 0.04 of an inch feeler gauge and you can see that, that that goes in there. The specification is uh, 0.03. So I'm really, to get this back to specification, really I need a 0.01 shim uh, on reassembly to be able to, to get back down to my uh, 0.03 gap here. So I'm gonna make a note of that, ready for uh, reassembly and ordering the parts. So that's the first part of the, the strip down done. Uh, taking the lay shaft back out again. Got all the parts here, input shaft, lay gear, reverse gear, uh, not quite sure. And then uh, we've got our main shaft here. So I'm gonna put those all aside, ready for inspection in a moment. And then we're gonna finish off stripping down the housing and, and the rear case. And now the remote housing. So there's a little bit more involved to the housing than at first thought. Uh, the shaft has a wood rough key on it. 
so uh, you have to be mindful of that and to, to get that out and also these these plugs at either end have to be removed uh, in order that you can get the shaft out uh, for the reverse spring which sits in here with its plunger you can simply uh, get some pliers and pull the pin out while pushing down on the spring and I managed to get that out cleanly uh, after that the rest is is fairly self-explanatory so we've got the the casting now completely free uh, we've got the rear housing completely stripped down as well so we've got our housings done we can get those cleaned up uh, and looking as good as new we can get all the parts cleaned up ready to go back in uh, and ready for, for getting the reassembly so now we can uh, inspect the rest of the gearbox before uh, deciding the best way of cleaning and then getting it reassembled. Initial inspection of the parts then, and it's good news, uh, the lay shaft has got no real damage on it at all. Uh, in fact, it looks as if it's almost good enough to go back, go back in. Uh, looking at the gear set, there's no obvious wear, damage, chipped teeth on uh, any of the gears which is, is really good news. Uh, the lay shaft, again, no, no chips or damage on the teeth. Uh, first gear looks to be okay. Uh, looking at the bulk rings, they seem to be pretty good. Again, no kind of damage on those as such. So uh, I'm quite impressed with that. Uh, one thing I've noticed is that there is, you, you probably can't see it here, but there is a, a, a little bit of play in the main input bearing and also on the, uh, the main output bearing as well. So those two bearings definitely need replacing. Uh, so my thought process at the moment is uh, to get a standard overhaul kit, which includes the two bearings the three thrust bearings that go in the lay shaft and uh, at the end of the, the input shaft here. Uh, those kits come with a new lay shaft anyway, so, so that would all get replaced. And then do a standard overhaul on this. And uh, I think that will be all this gearbox needs, which is great news. So uh, that's the end of the strip down. So, uh, we're going to get some parts. Uh, I've, I've measured up. I need a new thrust bearing as well for the end of the lay shaft to take in 0 0.01 of a thou on the uh, on the on the end float I've got on that. So I'm going to get the parts, get the overhaul kit, and then in the next video, what we'll be doing is uh, overhauling the bearings, replacing the parts, and uh, we'll get the gearbox back together. So hopefully you've seen that stripping down a ribcage gearbox is actually not that difficult. It can be done at home uh, with, with really garage tools uh, to enable you to inspect, uh, understand what's happening with your gearbox and overhaul it yourself. So once again, thanks for watching. Thanks for liking. Thanks for subscribing. See you on the next video.